As mountain bikers, I'm sure it's safe to say that all of us have dreamed about new bike day at some time or other. For myself, I was lucky enough for that day to fall just back at the beginning of April. Needless to say, it was a very exciting time, but even more so than usual, as it was also my first attempt at building up a bike myself, without just taking all the parts down to a local shop. A few months down the line and this bike has already seen a decent amount of abuse, but thankfully it's still going strong. It's also brought in a number of questions from people asking about the spec and wanting a more detailed look at the bike itself. So without further ado, here's my 2019 bike check video. So it's a very chilly morning here in Glen Eve in the Scottish Highlands. I'm set up by this lovely river and I'm gonna run you through my bike build. So starting with the frame, this is a Merida 160 aluminium 2018 model. And I actually got this under warranty. I used to have a 2015 version of the bike and unfortunately I cracked the frame, but Merida really good on the warranty. They um, actually managed to replace that, send me a brand new frame out. And that's what kind of sparked the whole idea of putting a whole custom build together. So a few things about the frame. You can see I've got a bottle cage on there. That's a Fidlock uh, magnetic bottle cage. So give it a twist, pops off like that. There's no actual cage on there, just magnets. Clips back on pretty easy. I've got a RockShox Super Deluxe shock on there. Run it about 25% sag. Don't have any volume spaces at the minute, but I think I'm definitely gonna invest in some. I think I've got four clicks of low speed compression and the same rebound. And that's from the fully open position. For a down tube protector, the frame didn't actually come with one, so I've made my own. This is out of Kydex, which you can pick up on eBay, like a sheet of it for three pounds or so, put it in the oven and actually cut it out and mold it to your bike while it's hot. Moving to the forks up front, I've got Fox 36 Performance Elite. They're in 170 mil and I'm running about 75 PSI in there. On the shock, I was running 190. So I found the Fox recommendations to actually be pretty firm. They only recommend about 15 to 20% sag, which doesn't seem like a lot. So I think I'm running them about 30%, which feels a lot nicer. I've got four clicks of low speed compression and two clicks of high speed. I've been messing around with that on the trails I've been riding up here in Scotland. I still need to get it fine tuned. Got a grouse in the background making an absolute racket. <laughs> so yeah, like I say, still need to play around with the settings quite a lot. No volume spaces front or back need to get that dialed in over the coming months, just riding different trails. Attached to the forks, I've got a Mudhugger FR. Really great thing for keeping that mud out of your face. Like in the UK, trails can be wet all year round. So handy to have on there all the time. Moving on to wheels, I've got the Hope Enduro wheel set. Hope Pro 4's on there, Enduro rims. Not much else to say about them. Great wheels. I've heard reviews of them getting dinged super easy. To be honest though, I've been down the World Cup track at Fort William with these. They've suffered one ding, a couple of punctures on the back, but that's the tire, not the rim. And yeah, they've done really well, considering people have said they've got dings in them after a couple of rides. These are holding up pretty strong. Moving on to tires then, I've got a Maxxis Minion DHF up front. That's a 2.3, running it at about 25 PSI. And on the rear, I've got a High Roller 2, running that at about 27. Both tires have EXO protection, and this front one is the Max Terra version and the rear is just pretty bog standard. Cheap and cheerful, 30 quid. Can't go wrong, apart from a few flats. <laughs> I've actually got PT's tubeless valves on here. The tires are set up tubeless, obviously. And these valves have a built-in valve core remover on the little cap, which makes it ideal for if you damage anything on the trail and you don't need to carry an extra tool around to get out your bag. So yeah, great bit of kit to have. A little bit expensive, but they've also got lifetime warranty, so can't go wrong there. Moving up to the cockpit now, got a new proof horizon 35 millimeter stem that's 35 millimeter long and 35 mil clamp rental fat bars first time having fat bars i don't think i'd go back now they feel really good so they've got a 30 mil rise and they're 800 mil wide which first time riding 800 mil bars as well i think previously i was running 760 don't actually notice that big a difference on this bike but it feels good so keeping it that way the grips are just some pretty bog standard ODIs off my old bike. They're gonna be changed out for some Ergons along with the saddle at a later date. The fat bars as well, they've got a seven degree back sweep and five degree up sweep. I've got a few notes on my phone here because I can't remember all this. <laughs> I've got Shimano XTR M9000 race disc brakes. Shimano are great, they're so easy to bleed. You can just stick a funnel up there, do a top lead dead fast before you go out on a ride if needed. 
I've got a 203 mil rotor up front and a 180 mil at the rear. So these rotors are off my old bike as well. Might replace them in the future. I think they were off SLXs or something like that, but they do the job. All right, drivetrain time. We've got the SRAM GX Eagle full drivetrain. That's a 10 tooth right up to 50 tooth, 32 at the front. And yeah, there's nothing you can't climb with this range. It's ridiculous. As long as you've got traction, I've made it up some crazy steep hills that otherwise you'd have absolutely no need to climb. So you probably could go like a 34 tooth at the front and make it a bit harder on the pedals down because there's been a few times, especially on the downhill tracks here, where I've run out of gears and you're just spinning. So yeah, in the future maybe when everything wears out, I'll go for a 34 on the front. But for the time being, this is an absolute machine for climbing. The GX cranks up front, I've got in a 170 mil length and attached to them are some Shimano Saint pedals. I've had those for quite a number of years now on my old bike as well. Still going strong, so no need to replace them. Dropper post there is a Brand X Ascend. Actually pretty cheap. I think it was about 120 pounds for a 150 mil rise. Yeah, really good. Like I can't fault it at all so far and certainly beats some of these other droppers that you splashed out like hundreds and hundreds of pounds on. So if you're on a budget, I'd totally recommend this brand. Only been a month so far, but I've got friends who've had them a couple of years and they're still going, so can't recommend them enough. Like I say, with the saddle as well, that's gonna be replaced at some point, but for now I'm running a Bontrager, which was actually off the trek that I was riding for quite a while. A few little bits and bobs that need fixing, like some of these cables are still really long. They can be trimmed down a bit. I've actually got some, uh, makeshift inner tube protection on the on the chainstay back there. The bike actually does come with its own chainstay protector but for the trails up here that are super rough the chain is slapping around quite a lot so I've just put that on in the meantime as a bit of extra protection until I get something else sorted. Oh and finally I've got some bike shield frame protector just in the key places like the top tube, a bit of the down tube and around the front where cables are going to be rubbing as well. So yeah it's probably all I can think of off the top of my head. If I've missed anything, I'll cut to myself doing a voiceover just now. Okay, so just very quickly, a couple of things I forgot to mention. The frame is a size large, which is recommended for people 5'10 up to 6'3. I'm 6'1, so pretty much right in the middle of that guide. My bike weighs in at just under 15 kilograms, and I've listed the geometries on screen now, which are just taken from the Merida website. And although my bike is custom, these should be about the same, as I've tried to keep the components fairly similar throughout. But yeah, other than that, hope you've enjoyed seeing what this bike's made of. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.